Hello and welcome to this video tutorial using ResiPy for 2D forward modelling of electrical resistivity. Now forward modelling is really just a process of creating a synthetic data set from which we can assess survey design and understand what the electrical resistivity response is to a certain target. So to enter the forward modelling mode within ResiPy, we want to go to the forward tick here and now we are in the forward modelling mode. Now the first part of creating any forward model is to decide where we want to put our electrodes. ResiPy has an option to generate our electrode spacing using these tabs here. So we're on the electrode XYZ topo tab. I've said I want 24 electrodes with an X spacing of 2. And then if I want to simulate a slope, I can do this by adding a Z spacing. I'm going to now press the generate button. And as you can see, we've now got a bunch of electro coordinates. So here we have the electrode identification number, the label, the electrode X coordinate, that's the coordinate along the ground, and then the electrode elevation. We also have this buried column and we can tick here if we want to say a electrode is buried, but we're not going to worry about that for now. The next part of creating a forward model is to create a modeling mesh. Now, <coughs> we have a couple of options here. We can create a quadrilateral mesh and we can start to add regions to our mesh, like so. Or we can also design a, a model prior to creating the mesh and we can do this using a triangular mesh. So I'm going to click the poly button here and this gives me the option to create a polygon. So I just left click around where I want the polygon points to be and then right click to close off the polygon. I'm going to simulate this now so I'm going to press the button triangular mesh and this creates a triangular mesh with two regions. I can then use this table to define the resistivity of the target here and the resistivity of the background region. So the background region is region number two and I'm going to give this a low resistivity and then make this circular object here I have a high resistivity so I'm simulating a high resistivity target. The next task is to decide what kind of electrode configuration I want to be using. So we've got a couple of different options here and you can see in ResiPy we've got a little figure on the right hand side which shows us what the electrical configuration looks like and how these refer to the values A and N. Um, the one two that I'm going to focus on is firstly a, a, a Renner or a Venner uh, electro configuration and this is where you have your electrodes encompassed between your potential electrodes. So your current electrodes or potential electrodes are encompassed within each other, so it's a nested measurement. Now this can be quite useful for looking at horizontal um, features. The other um, electric configuration I want to highlight is a dipole-dipole where your potential electrodes are next to each other and the or your current electrodes are next to each other and your potential electrodes are next to each other and the potential electrodes exist out of the um, current inducing electrodes which means that we can effectively take multiple measurements at once uh, which would be quite useful in the case of doing a quick survey because we can get lots of measurements in a quicker amount of time. Here I'm going to add two dipole-dipole sequences 
and editing these A and N values. So the A value refers to the interelectrode spacing, whilst the N value refers to the distance between your current and potential electrode dipoles. I can now press this button, the forward modeling button, and what this is going to do is it's going to take that mesh that I just made with the electrode locations and create a synthetic data set. So actually now we have now done the forward model. We can now move to the inversion. So now we want to invert this synthetic data set. We can have a look at some um, inversion settings. We don't need to worry about too many of these, but the main two to sort of work look at is this A and B weight. And uh, these refer to the amount of error that you expect within your data. So obviously we've created a synthetic data set and we know that there isn't much error. But you can make these values bigger and you're effectively telling the inversion that there's more error associated with our data. I then go to the inversion tab. And pressing this green invert button is going to invert the synthetic data that we have just created. And we now got our inverted model. So we can see our high resistivity target has appeared in the inverted model here. And we've got a couple of options in the top of the results tab here. We can change our color scale. I quite like rainbow or jet. We can tick if we want to contour our results. And we can also increase the sensitivity overlay. So this indicates um, how far our measurements are actually sensitive to in terms of depth. We can add the edges and these should show the edges of the actual modeling mesh. And we can also restrict the uh, maximum and minimum bounds of our color scale. So what if we wanted to include a survey with uh, some strange electro topography. So here I have a spreadsheet of um, some electro coordinates. And I'm just going to copy and paste these into these columns. So to do that, I'm pressing Control C and Control V. And in this case, we might also want to include some extra topography um, to describe what the ground surface looks like where we don't have electrodes. So again, I'm just doing Control C. And then I'm going to this additional surface points section of the user interface here. So we've got the X and elevation coordinates. And Control V, and I copy those in. You can also import a CSV file. Now you can see I've got a wavy surface. And here I just want to simulate some high resistivity targets in these uh, little hills here. Maybe this simulates looking at something like a burial mound. And so I'm left click to add points and right click to pose a polygon. Now I create the mesh. And as you can see, we put some uh, different regions in these hills. So what I'm going to do is a region 5 is, is the background region. So I'm going to say that that's a low conductivity or a low resistivity and set the other regions to have a higher resistivity, say 100 ohm meters. Again, I'm just going to add a Venner array so that can be useful at determining uh, horizontal structures. Simulate some data. Here I've added 2% noise to the data. I'm going to set 
my A and B weight values to 0.01 and 0.02. Go to the log tab and press the green invert button. And as you can see, we've ended up with a wavy surface with some high resistivity anomalies associated with these hills. Now, one final question is, what if we add a target which is too deep for our sensors to pick up on? So here I'm adding a, let's say, a, a conductive target at 12 meters depth. Generate a forward model. In this case, I change the value of A and B to be lower. We have an apparently a large change in resistivity here. But if you look at this color scale, the resistivity is changing by 6 ohm meters. So if I change the scale to between 100, between 20 and 100, we can see we haven't really picked up on our target here. And that's because the resistivity array that we're using uh, either doesn't have uh, enough depth of penetration to actually see that deep or the resistivity contrast of the target isn't great enough to be detected uh, by our electrodes. And we can see with this DOI estimate here, this is the depth of investigation estimate, that our target, which is located at around 12.5 meters depth, is beyond uh, apparent depth of investigation. So we're not going to be able to see that. And you need to redesign your survey to have a longer electrode array. So now what I encourage is um, trying out different uh, targets uh, with the mesh creation tab and trying out different electro configurations and seeing what the sensitivity of those electro configurations are to certain targets. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you for watching this video tutorial.